Welcome to our podcast on Point of View, a pretty important literary term, another one of the many that we're going to be looking at this year. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so what is Point of View? Point of View is basically the perspective from which the story is told. Basically, we have to find out who is telling this story. Is this somebody who is in the story, maybe one of the characters? Is this some sort of outside narrator? A narrator who might know everything that's going on and be able to share that with us as the audience. Or perhaps they are a narrator who only knows a couple things and chooses to keep those more secret. Point of view is the perspective that the story is being told from. Point of view is important because it lets us know who is telling the story. And at the literal level, that's somewhat important. We want to find out who that person is. But we also want to be looking at that interpretive level and thinking, does this narrator know enough to tell us the story? Do they remember things wrong? Do they embellish? Are they reliable? Are they not reliable? And so the first part is we need to identify who is talking. Is it somebody within the story? Or is it some sort of narrator outside of that story? And then we need to start looking at what is their bias? What is their perspective? And how might their perspective vary from the absolute truth? The biggest thing for us to be looking at in terms of point of view is that narrator's reliability. Should we believe him or her? Can we? Sometimes we get these narrators who are too young, maybe too old, maybe have proven themselves to be forgetful, or perhaps they are embellishing to make themselves look good as a character. And so we have to look at that and say, well, what exa who exactly is telling this story? And then what do we need to sift through in terms of their own bias to get at the root of the story? A first example to look at point of view might be the short story by Edgar Allan Poe called The Telltale Heart. Take a look at some of the early narration here and start asking yourself, who is telling this story? And should we be on guard in terms of taking him as a reliable narrator? Or perhaps he's a little bit unreliable. Very, very dreadfully nervous. But why will you say that I'm mad? See how calmly, how precisely I can tell the story to you. Listen. It starts with the old man. An old man in an old house. A good man, I suppose. He had never harmed me. I didn't want his gold, if gold there was. Then what was it? I think, I think it was his eye. Yes, that eye, the eye, that. His eye staring, milky white film. The eye, everywhere, everywhere in everything. Of course I had to get rid of the eye. So what do we do? We need to see which character or narrator is telling the story. One way to do that is to look at the pronouns that are being used. A first person pronoun is going to use things like I, me, my, you know, all of those first person pronouns because that character is in the story and then telling it from his or her perspective. Another way to look at it is whose perspective is most obvious. For example, in movies, sometimes we follow only one character. The camera seems to linger on them. It seems to show from their perspective. They seem to see the world from a unique point of view. Therefore, the story is being told through their point of view. And so, we want to make sure that we are able to discern whose angle is the most pronounced when determining point of view. So let's look at the three point of view perspectives. The first one is the idea of first person point of view. The story is being told by a character in the story. We're going to see those first person pronouns, and then we're going to see that speaker's perspective. An example that we've had so far is To Kill a Mockingbird. The story is told through Scout's perspective. And when we start to look at that in terms of reliability, we have to question, can the young Scout be accurate in her remembering of what has happened? Even though the whole story is told by Scout after the fact, we then have to question, can she remember accurately? If this happened in her childhood and Scout has now aged, might things have been mistaken? Now that Scout has aged, she's truly telling the story. But might she have forgotten things? Might she get some details wrong? Might she embellish to make certain people look good and other people look bad? 
those are all things that we get to play with in our mind and start to question about when we're looking at a first person narrator. We want to make sure that we are looking at the narrator and determining if he or she is reliable. Should we believe him or her? And if we choose not to, why? Is there something about them that makes them unreliable? And then if we are choosing to see them as unreliable, what does that do to the story? Which things might be confused? Which things might be off kilter? Those are things that we should be paying attention to. We mentioned this before, but Scout is a first person narrator. And we do need the question, is someone that is telling the story from flashback or who is experiencing the story as a young girl, does she have all the details right? And might the truth of that story be a little manipulated? Go back to the telltale heart that we looked at before. The story is told by the young man who is in this story, but see what he says. Does he paint a picture of a very reliable narrator? Might there be some things we want to believe, but also some things we should not? As readers, we need to identify where the narrator is, but then also, is this person reliable or not? Looking at the text of Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump tells his own story while he's sitting on that bench waiting for the bus. Is there any reason we should doubt the accuracy of his life story, even though he's telling it? See what kind of clues the filmmaker gives us to potentially have us question his reliability. Another part of point of view is what we call the third person limited point of view. This is basically that the story is told by an outside narrator. You're going to see pronouns from that third person category, he, she, they, etc. This narrator is somebody watching from the outside and then telling the story from there. If they are a limited third person narrator, that means that they can know the thoughts and feelings of one character. Most likely, that's going to be the main character, the protagonist. They're going to tell the story through that person's point of view. There are always those times, though, where a narrator may seek to tell the story from a different perspective and kind of follow one other character. If the narrator does follow some sort of minor character, that creates all kinds of issues for us in terms of what he or she is privy to. What does that minor character see? What do they not? And are they being able to tell us the most reliable story here? Again, we need to go back to the idea of that narrator being reliable. What might they not see happening? If a narrator is limited, they can only get inside the brain of one character. What if they misinterpret what another character is thinking? What if they don't understand what's happening behind a closed door? Those are all kinds of things that a third person limited narrator might have problems with. And so we as readers need to decide, should we believe this narrator or should we question him or her? The third point of view that we'd look at is what we call third person omniscient. Again, this is told by an outside narrator. We're going to see the pronouns in the third person, he, she, etc. So what makes a third person omniscient narrator different from a third person limited narrator is the idea that an omniscient narrator knows the thoughts and feelings of two or more characters. They might know the thoughts and feelings of every single character, and that provides a very open book for us as readers. We are able to see what everybody is thinking. It's very difficult to have any hidden secrets, things like that, because the narrator can choose to share every single thing. At the same time, we also have to be paying attention to when the narrator is choosing not to share certain things with us, even though, as an omniscient narrator, he or she could. So we want to be paying attention to how many thoughts and feelings can this narrator know, and how many is he or she sharing with us as an audience. We kind of mentioned this already, but the narrator is outside. Should we believe him or her? What happens if an omniscient narrator starts out the story telling us everything about everybody, but then chooses to not reveal a certain point? Might that hidden point come back later? Might that serve as foreshadowing? Might that serve as some sort of red flag for us to be paying attention all of a sudden that this narrator has chosen his or her mind to not reveal everything? Again, the point is we want to check the reliability of the narrator as that is our access point into the story. And so we need to be paying attention to what he or she is giving us.
So in sum, point of view is the perspective from which the story is told. We have the three major ones. We have first person, where the, character, the narrator is in the story. Third person limited, where the narrator is outside of the story and knows the thoughts and feelings of probably just the main character. And then we also have third person omniscient, where the narrator is again outside the story, but seems to know the thoughts and feelings of two or more, perhaps all of the characters. And the biggest thing with all of these is to examine the idea of reliability. Is the narrator telling us an objective story, or is he or she putting a slant on it, a bias, a perspective? We need to look at that and then potentially question it. Because as the point of view is revealed, that can help us get to, as always, the deeper theme of this novel. What does it mean when the narrator chooses not to reveal certain things? What does it mean when the narrator does reveal everything? These are the important things that we need to examine when we're looking at point of view. As always, thanks for listening. Please bring any questions and notes you have to class. We'll go ahead and take a look at those, answer any questions we can, and then start practicing right away. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon.